Hello, Ian here from Dark Place Workshop. Welcome back to another video. This one we're doing uh, Mad Eye Moody. Okay, Professor Moody, really enjoyed this one. I uh, hope you do too. Let's get on with it. Okay, to get started, um, as you can see, I've already primed him using the zenithal priming method uh, in one of the previous episodes. And uh, I decided, you know, the, the main reason for this series is to keep the, the colours you know, more or less the same as, as other models. So I'm going to use exactly the same colours as I did for Hagrid's cloak or outer jacket um, for the outer jacket on Moody here. So that was a 50-50 mix of uh, Citadel's Steel Legion Drab and Baylor Brown. Um, I've gone with the the usual mix of uh, water and flow improver. So it's about well, a drop and a half of paint of the Steel Legion Drab and Baylor Brown. A uh, drop of water and a drop of flow improver. I've made a start on the skin already. And the plan is to do a couple of thin coats of this. And just make sure you cover everything and let it dry. Sorry if it appears a little bit darker, but I've changed the uh, the settings on the camera. Um, so that's the first coat dry. I'm going in with another coat now and um, I think I'll stay away from the the upper raised areas on this one if I can but you know, I'm not that fussy about it so I'll try and keep towards the shadow areas on the folds. Now that's not important if you don't but you, know, you can just add another coat straight on but um, you think about the placement it'll save you doing highlights later on oh, so you're doing as many highlights and when you've finished all the way around leave that to dry Okay, so while that's uh, drying off properly, I'm going to go in with the trousers now and you can guess what it is. Uh, yeah, German grey. So I've got a drop of paint, drop of water, drop of flow improver. Uh, let's keep it nice and thin. Um, it can be darker than the other stuff that we've done before because it's it's more or less all in shadow, isn't it? Because of the, the coat either side. So as long as I don't get it on the jacket we should be okay and I might go two coats on this because we're not going to catch a lot of highlights in that area anyway so um, I'll do the rest and we'll come back so for the shirt or the whatever it is he's wearing on there his top anyway underneath his coat I'm going to use the same blue as I did on the Death Eaters. It's a uh, scale 75 Zinsworth blue. It's like a greeny, bluey grey. Um, I, I haven't found anything that uh, anything that comes remotely close to it as yet, but um, I think it's a it's a beautiful colour. So we're going to use that for the. Oh, sorry, I'm going to use that for the jacket or the. Oh, I don't know what it is. It's like a heavy duty kind of shirt, really. Uh, so we're going to do two coats of this. And I'm trying to keep it nice and thin so we can put a, put a couple of layers in. And keep the uh, keep the shadows and highlights from the initial priming. So we'll come back when that's dry. Okay, so I've done an extra coat of the the Innsmouth blue. Um, now I'm moving on to the staff. I've got 
at uh, Citadel's um, Rhinox hide. So it looks quite a dark woody colour on the on the box art. And I've got it quite thin. It's about it's almost 50-50 paint and water. I haven't bothered with the flow improver. And I don't know whether to do the skull in a, a bony colour or not, but this is all wood on the uh, wood on the box. Oh, we'll see how we get on. Got a bit on the skin now. We'll have to clean that off. That's just water on my brush and I'm just rubbing the paint off. Yeah, that's not going to come. Might have to do some skin top chops. Yeah, that's nearly there. Okay. Alright, hair next. Okay, for the hair then, I've got a 50 50 mix of Shabti Bone and Baylor Brown. Remember, we use Baylor Brown in the coat. Uh, it just helps tie things together. I love using the same colours for different things. And just slap it on basically. And I'll tidy it up off the camera. Try not to get any on the skin if you've already done the skin, basically. Okay, so the most of the colours are starting to dry nicely now. Um, I've done two coats of the hair, and what I've got now is a wash. Um, it's about 50-50 mix of um, Agrax Earthshade and the Sepia so I think Agrax will be too strong on its own for this colour here I would have used um, the old Ogryn Flash but um, I just opened it up and it's all there's all bits in it and it looks horrible so it's probably about five years old now but. So there we are. Um, let's try and get in. Try and get some between the the skin and the you know the hairline as well. I've used Rhinox hide for the the eye patch and the strap. I had to do that off camera because there's no way I would have uh, would have been able to do that with the the light and the camera set up. So. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll leave the wash to dry and we'll come back. Okay, so what I've got now is a... Well, I'm using the same mix, the, the Agrax and the, the Sepia, um, but I've added a little bit of medium to it. And I'm just going to use that for the recesses of the coat, you know, just the dark folds. Uh, because the the medium makes it a lot thinner and less opaque, um, I'm not going to bother to feather it off or anything. I'm just going to leave it as it is, because um, it can cover up any uh, any mistakes with the the highlight stage. So I'll just leave a little bit pool in there. And I'll do the same for the rest of the coat. So that's the, the wash on, just to give you an idea of where I've been. I tried to pull it into these deep folds there. I managed to get a bit outside the fold, but what I did then was just got a, a wet brush and sort of pushed it into the... pushed it back into the fold, so hopefully it'll dry uh, quite nicely. And um, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna have to wait now till that dries. I'm not gonna use a hair dryer on it because it'll blow it out of the out of the recesses, and that's where I want it to collect. So we'll wait for that to dry, and uh, we'll come back with the next stage. So everything's dried off quite nicely now. But what I'm gonna do now is use a 50/50 mix of uh, null oil and agrax, just to shade the. Uh, the staff here because he's quite a dark um, brown for the base coat Agrax wouldn't really cut it as a a shade for it on its own so I need to darken it a little bit more I added a little bit of water to it but not a lot So that's pretty much everything base coated and washed, apart from the blue really. I need to put a, uh, a shade in there, we'll do that next. But we can start highlighting soon. So I'm going to shade the blue now. I've got um, Drakenhof Nightshade, but I've added a bit of medium to it. So it's about 50 50 because I think if I just put the Drakenhof on it, it'll. Uh, It'll be too dark. But, as usual, we'll see. <laughs> see what happens. See if it needs another coat or not. I think it might not because the, when we start highlighting it, you should get a nice contrast then. So, yeah. Let's wait and see. So I'm going to highlight the hair. So I've gone back to the original mix of the, the base coat for the hair, which was a mix. And because we washed it, I'm just going back in to start highlighting. And picking out the strands. At the back it's quite wavy so it goes like an S shape so I'm going to highlight here and I'll leave that bit there and then highlight that bit here so you get like a, a transition so let's highlight at the top skip a bit and then highlight from there and when we go on to the next colour. If we highlight the same parts again it should give us a nice nice colour transition. So another highlight now we've added a little bit of bone and a little bit of ivory which is an off-white colour and I've, I've done the sides I just wanted to do the top now. I'm just trying to pick out the top part of the hair because that's going to be the lightest and the parts that are coming out away from the head rather than doing the whole length of the hair um, because I want to keep a little bit of shadow so let's highlight that bit highlight these little bits and then that little bit down there. So I'm not doing the whole length of the hair. Just gives a nice little bit of contrast to it. And I'll carry on around the side of the head now. Okay, back to the jacket. I'm using the original colour Innsmouth Blue and I've added a little bit of Miskatonic Grey, which is a, another colour from the Shades of Doom set. And we're starting to highlight. parts of the jacket and I'm just looking for raised areas at the minute nothing's 
special because we're going to go a lot lighter. What I'll do for that stage. So carrying on from there, I've added some ivory to the mix, so it's it's getting close to a a sky blue kind of colour, but there's still a bit of green in it. So it's uh, quite a strange colour, but it's really nice. So I'm just sticking to the the raised areas. picking out areas where I think the light is going to hit. So for the straps going across the chest I've added a little bit of German grey to this blue um, just to make it a little bit darker and I'm just treating it like an area and just blocking the colour along that line and I'll do the buckles later on. I'll tidy that up off the camera. So I just tidied up the straps um, and now I'm going to use like a, a medium-ish grey. Just to do, it looks like a zip. So I'm just going to use that for down the centre line. I did do it with the same colour as the straps originally. I thought I could go a little bit lighter. Oh. Okay, apologies, but I've skipped a few steps. Um, with the straps, I've done a black line above and below and round about the area where the buckle is going to go just in preparation for the metallic to go over the top and um, I put a little thin bit of black in between you know along the middle of the strap so the edges are highlighted with a lighter grey and it's, it's dark in the middle basically so I'll do the buckles off camera I'm going to use steel for that um, it's just too intricate to do you know with the camera setup so I apologize for that but basically it's just four straight lines <laughs> uh, you know, to make a square uh, pretty simple and I think I'll do the gold buckles of the coat as so well. If I work there. on the staff now I'm going to be using walnut from scale 75 it's in the the wood and leather set and it's a, it's a lovely color and I, I can't find an alternative to it um, it's, it's just unique really so I'm going to use that as a highlight now for the staff okay so you know the drill by now I'm just going to pick out the raised areas where I think the light is going to be hitting so it'll be the the tops of each shape of the curves coming down which is from there I had a little bit of a disaster and actually snapped the head off I've actually glued it back on. Now I've added a little bit of bleach bone to it, um, just to pick out some more highlights now. Um, there's nothing wrong with uh, dry brushing this, because there's, there's lots of raised area detail on it, so it may be a little bit quicker and less aggro if you just dip your, paint, uh, dip your brush in some paint, rub off the excess and just, just go like that across the surface and it'll pick out the raised detail then. There's, there's loads of um, loads of videos on YouTube about dry brushing so it's, if you're unsure just pick one of them. They're all pretty much the same. Um, there's lots of raised area detail on this so it's quite nice to pick out but I'll save time get dry brushing. I did one more highlight with a little bit more bleach boning and um, I'm happy with that. Um, 
if you go too far you know just give it another wash of anagrax or if you add a little bit of black to the the walnut and put the shadows back in like I've done there it should look okay that's right, so that's the staff done okay so I've done the the mad eye uh, off the camera because it's it's too intricate to do with the the light setup and I just use ivory for that and I'm gonna put a spot of blue on didn't work the first time so I've gone ivory over the top again so it might look a little bit even uneven Okay, so I'm going to go back to the coat now. So I've got the original mix of the Steel Legion Drab and Baylog Brown and I'm just going to try and smooth out some of the work that we've already done. Okay, so I'm just about to finish off um, layering on the original base coat of the Steel Legion Drab and Baylog Brown onto the, you know, the rain coat. I'm almost finished, I've just got the front to do and all I'm doing is picking out the raised areas again and leaving the shadows as they are pretty simple, nice and thin um, about 50-50 mix of paint and water don't bother with flow improver this time because I'm not bothered about um, getting it into the shadows and stuff so we'll carry on with the highlights now for the next highlight I've added a bit of um, some easy desert into the mix and we're gonna start picking out all the edges It's the same again, it's about 50-50% paint to water. I've got too much on my brush on it. But if you keep it thin it should give you a nice little transition as long as you're working in a smaller area from the last uh, last coat so the last time I would have started up here but I'm starting about here now And with the next highlight, I'll start down here. Okay, I'll carry on with that and I'll come back. So that last layer is still fairly wet, and I've um, I've added some more Zamizi Desert to the the mix. And as I said, I'm going to start further down with the next highlight. Don't worry if it's not thin enough. If it's not thin enough, dip your water, dip your brush in some water, and then feather it off there. So it should give you a nice transition. So hopefully you got that. So it's starting to build up a nice little highlight there. What I'll do, I'll, I'll do the same for the the shoulders, but I'm working up the way. So I'm, I'm pulling any pigment that's in the brush, I'm pulling it up towards the shoulder. And what I'll do, I'll wet my brush. And just feather off that bit so it gets a nice little blend there. Okay, that's it for that highlight. You can probably see it's still <laughs> still a little wet. So I've got um, pure 
some easy desert now. Um, it's more or less a glazed consistency, so it's about one drop of water. Uh, sorry, one drop of paint until about two drops of water. And um, I'm starting further down. Uh, the plan is I'm going to put some mud along the bottom, so I need a nice contrast in highlight there to work off and the the blood or uh, oh god i'm having a nightmare today so the um the mud in theory should really uh stand out against where i've highlighted and the same again i'll pull the pigment up for the shoulder and forget the collar right so i think that's the highlights done what I did on the front um, is to stick to the obviously the lapel and the, the absolute edge of the coat just to pick it out with a lighter colour and any you know really prominent creases will stay on the top of the crease. It's looking okay now. It's inside there. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to add a bit of um, interest to this by putting a bit of mud along the bottom. So what I've done, um, I've made a mix of Citadel's Rhinox hide with um, you know the original Steel Legion drab so it's about 50-50 and um, I've got my old stipple brush um, basically it's just a, a brush like that and um, all I'm gonna do is try and stipple it on now you can use a small bit of sponge for this or you use a, the point of a, a brush you know it's totally up to you on how you apply it um, I haven't added that much water to it as yet, I just want to see what it actually looks like. So I've dipped my brush in the paint. Uh, I'll need to stabilise it while I start to apply. It may be easier with a brush but I wanted to give this a go um, because it gives some nice little random patterns. And what you can do is vary the the dilution of the paint as well. So you know, um, so patches of it will appear darker than the rest. And I think we'll swap swap to a brush because that's not great. I'm going to thin it down a bit. And just dab on. A fairly big brush for this, and I will swap down to a uh, a smaller one in a in a second or two. But basically, you're just building up layers of dirt. I wanted to get a bit, I will, well I probably will, I will get a bit fancy uh, by adding some pigments to this later on, but I, I don't think it will be right to add this to a, you know, a, a beginner's style uh, tutorial because it, I think it will put you out of your comfort zone. I will do one in the future. So just make random shapes and dots. Try to change the direction of your brush as well. And after a couple of coats it will start to build up. If there's anything you don't like, just wet your brush and take it away. Well, I'll carry on doing that and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we finish. So what I did after that, I got um, store vermin, storm verming fur 
and I did exactly the same I just stippled it off but I stayed down at the bottom so it gives a nice little bit of uh, nice little highlight to that brown and uh, it's not looking too bad so I think I'll finish there I'll take some nice pictures and uh, we'll do a wrap okay Professor Moody done um, really enjoyed messing about with pigments on this one is uh, it's quite enjoyable nice change um, if you don't understand anything, give us a shout. Uh, any requests as well. If, uh, if there's anything you want to see, you know, uh, I'll try and accommodate that as well. So you know, just get in touch in the comments below. I'll get back to you. So that's it for me for now. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.